Hello everyone, welcome to The Ranting Shop with me, Melissa, and today we're going to be discussing Ready to Love Season 8, Episode 7, I believe. And in this episode, Tommy's assignment was for the men to allow their interest to see their exes and speak with the exes. So that's what we're going to be speaking about essentially today. And we're going to start first off with Maurier. Okay, let's start off with Maurier. So, first of all, I was so shocked to see Janelle come here, come on the date, because I was like, I never knew him and Maurier, she and Maurier had this connection to the point where she would be meeting his ex. And, you know, after watching all of the dates i've come to the realization that this particular season of ready to love didn't heal a lot of strong connections at all when i re- see or saw the people who were allowed to go on dates with the guys and see their exes i felt as if they were just filling out quotas like okay let's put philip with three women Whether he has a strong connection with them or not is irrelevant. Let's put Maurier with two. Let's put Herbert with one. Let's put this one with that. And and it just seemed very weird to me. Because if we were not allowed to see or we didn't see, you know, the connection really form, then there's somewhat of a disconnect with why these people are allowed to see your exes and speak with your exes. So in this particular season, there's definitely something wrong. They're not connecting. There's no genuine interest with anybody. This season, I don't even have to see the ending, but it just seems like a failed uh, season to me. And it would probably be the worst season out of everything that we've seen so far. Okay, so as I was saying, Janelle was an interesting addition to Maurice's thing. My thing about Maurice's date was, why didn't he just go with Jessica? Like, Jessica was literally all he spoke about. She's literally the only one he looked like he had any interest in. I don't understand what Janelle has to do, if anything, to be honest. Is it a numbers thing? Is it a thing where you need to make it seem like you have a lot of connections? Because, like, I'm not buying it, you know? So, anyways... There was this whole conversation about the ex asking them if they're sexual and they were absolutely not having it, Janelle or Jessica. They will not be discussing that with you. And I thought that that was such a weird question for the ex to ask. And then in my mind, I'm thinking, I hope this wasn't something that Maurier asked the ex to ask. And I also, too, am not really sure what neither one of their sexual appetites might be like either. I'll find out. That's yeah. why I'm at with it. Yeah. We got this. Yeah, you know, you I'm going to find out. Yeah. He really did ask his ex to ask this, these women about their sexual appetite. That's just so crazy to me. This man is coming off so unaware at this point. First of all, you're bringing occult stuff to women that are devoutly Christian and religious. And then secondly, you're wanting to ask a question about sex to women that clearly look like they don't discuss that with just anybody. It also made me look at Maurier sideways because initially he came across like this sweet guy. But the more we're seeing him on this show, the more he's looking like he's anything but this teddy bear guy that we thought he was so then she brings up the whole tarot thing and it's like i thought maurier said he was christian or maybe i was misinterpreting something when i think it was kyra that asked him about his religious stance and stuff i thought he said he was christian so i'm confused as to why the tarot thing became something that was spoken about and then later on we're realizing that actually he's into that spiritual thing and that is why or how he got to be with that ex right and it just has me viewing him a completely different way 
So one of the things that me and Maria connected on is spirituality. So I'm in this metaphysical world and it's my thing. So tarot cards, metaphysical, is that a deal breaker for you? I was totally and completely blindsided. The women are flabbergasted. Like, we never spoke about this with Maury. This is like coming from left field. We never thought that that is how Maury was swinging. Which leads me to believe, like, what exactly do these people talk about when they have conversations? Because I would think that religious beliefs would be something that would be of tantamount importance to speak on at the very beginning you know to get that out of the way like that would be like one of these leading questions it would be what is your religious belief and that would be what this what makes you decide to continue or like go to other people so i'm shocked that they never spoke on this but the women made it clear that they're not into that tarot stuff you know um so i think that date went very badly and i feel like it is very clear to me from this point on that jessica or janelle is not gonna be pursuing anything with maury not that i thought that Janelle was pursuing anything because she said who her top twos were and they were never Maurier. So it's Jessica who is now up to one pers prospect and that's Chris. So I don't think that she's gonna pursue anything more with Maurier. So I feel as if Maurier has like little to no more connections on this show. So Sierra was placed on a completely separate date. And I wonder why, but she was, and I think it was a different ex. Was it the same ex or a different ex who met Sierra? Because the ex that he met Janelle and Jessica with does not look like Tequila. Sierra was like, whoa, this woman looks just like Tequila. And I think Maria was saying some questionable things like, he was the one who messed up the situation with the ex and it was a missed opportunity. Nah, uh, I, I missed it. I missed it, man. Nah, but we're still good friends, though. Yeah. My, you had missed it? Yeah, you know, I, I messed up. It was, I put it on me. You know, I put the blame on me. Did you guys see this craziness? Like, how is Marie on a date with Sierra? and saying that he misses his ex like right in front of her that is just crazy to me this man to me just lacks something something is missing it, it just doesn't make sense to me you know they spoke about sex again before marriage and he's and she was like it's something that's gonna be done because she has to test it out first and all in all, the impression I got of Maurier was just not very good. I don't think he's serious. I don't think he really wants a relationship. I think what he's ready for is for sex. But I just don't see it in terms of a relationship with any of these women. He really wants Jessica. But I feel like him and Jessica don't fit. Don't fit. It doesn't match. It doesn't make sense. And I feel like Jessica is not going to settle with his BS. And she's not going to tolerate his mess. Um, I just feel like him, she and Maury is a disaster waiting to happen. So, and that's not going to make sense. He was saying in the men's lounge, at this point, he doesn't think Janelle or Jessica are going to be interested in him. So he's going to have to just settle for Sierra. And Tommy had to tell him, no, like it's not about who's there to settle for. It's about what you want. And he said he wanted Jessica. So just based on that, I see like Maurier is going to be the next person to go because I just don't see who else he's going to connect with. Jessica is who you want. Jen Jessica is seeing things that doesn't align with her religious beliefs so i don't see it working with jessica so what's even the point of staying on this show 
And then let's move on to Quinton Lee and Janelle. Now, this really pissed me off because, first of all, we learn things about Quinton that is not surprising from the ex, which is that he didn't really want to settle down. He didn't really want a, a monogamous relationship. That does not surprise any of us. Um, of course, he's been telling Janelle a completely different thing about, you know, not wasting time to get engaged or married. And that's weird. But I wouldn't consider that him lying or telling or spitting game. I consider it a situation of men do different things to different women, say different things to different women. So it's completely possible that when he was with this ex, he didn't want to be, he didn't want to settle down. But with Janelle, he wants to settle down. I, I don't see it as he's lying or he's telling tall tales. But what I will say is it is a very definite red flag from him because I never heard him say that he's changed and that he's that's not where he is in his journey at this time maybe I missed it but I didn't hear him say that so if I were Janelle I wouldn't choose anybody I wouldn't choose Quinton or Herbert because Quinton is giving he wants to have sex with Janelle and Herbert is giving he's not sure about Janelle. So I wouldn't give any of them any of my attention. Now, what really pissed me off with Quinton was like you have two women vying for your attention on this date. You know and you are very aware that they are both competing for you whether they'd like to admit it or not so why would you say in front of everybody your ex and janelle that you ghosted lee why would you do something like that because now from lee's perspective it's like you're calling her out in front of her competition So from the moment he felt comfortable to say that in public about Lee that he ghosted her because he's he's overwhelmed about the process and so on and so forth, it then came to my mind that, you know, he's only interested in Janelle at that point. The way he did that, it almost seemed as if he was trying to give Janelle some validation, some open validation that she's the number one. And she doesn't have to worry about Lee because he ghosted Lee. I'm pretty sure he'd never ghost Janelle. So, and another thing that made me believe that Janelle is his only choice is when they were walking out, he was holding Janelle's waist. So I'm like, huh? I didn't see him hold Lee's waist. So that all speaks to the fact that there really is no competition and Janelle is the one he's interested in. Um, I'm so disappointed that he did that to Lee because I feel like he threw her under the bus and I don't know what his intention was beyond impressing Janelle, right? Um, Janelle being older than him, maybe he feels the need to have to prove things to her and that was his attempt at doing so. I did not like it because at the expense, he did it at the expense of Lee and Lee must have not felt awful like being thrown under the bus like that, which is why she shut down. And Quinton's response is, oh, yeah, I noticed she shut down. I don't think I like that. Okay, fine. But then you put her in a very frustrating position to have to call her out in front of of um, Janelle. That was so unnecessary. So I completely understand why Lee shut down because I wouldn't want to speak to you after that either. Like you've made your choice clear at this point you know so there's that and then Janelle and Herbert have a meeting and Janelle speaks about wanting to be engaged by the end of the year and wanting children but I guess she never said that she wanted she didn't want to have her own kids she never made it clear that she wanted to adopt and so when Herbert heard that he was taken aback because in his mind he's thinking 
biological children he's not thinking adoption so i for one feel as if that's a big issue that's going to come back and rear its ugly head in their connection because they're not gonna be agreeing on that i don't know if janelle can have children or not but if her immediate you know way of becoming a mother is to adopt i'm thinking that there might be fertility things there that um is preventing her from having her own biological kids but i don't know but um she came into the thing thinking i don't care about exes like i don't ask about exes i don't care i feel as if it's just me and that person and um she really didn't you know care too much about that situation um also another thing about it is i feel like hubert doesn't really want janelle like that i feel like he's a bit intimidated by janelle as much as he's saying he likes the boss woman and the thug and i don't think he fully is selling it to himself because but then the ex does validate that he does take his time to get to know people. He's at a snail space. But then Herbert has to understand that in this setting, you cannot continue to do things how you would do them outside of this setting. This is a very particular setting. You knew what you signed up for. You knew that this would be speed dating. So you knew that you had to bring everything in quickly. That's not a situation where you can be slow. So I don't know why he's continuing to be that way. Other than maybe he's just not into Janelle. Or maybe he's just not into any woman on this show. Or maybe if he is into these women on this show. His space is just not going to make for a very good. I don't know. It's, it's just going to make. It's not going to make for a very good contestant on this show. And these women are expecting you to tell them immediately, what is it? Like, and Janelle even said, like, at this point, if you're still unsure, that's a big red flag for her. Because at the end of the day, she has to make a decision. She has to make a choice. And if you're not giving her much to work with, like, she has no choice but to move on. And that's just that, you know. Um, I understand where he's coming from. But he has to understand where the show is coming from and where the women are going to be coming from, you know. And I feel like all of that is disconnect. It's disconnecting. It's not making sense. So then let's speak on Philip. So Philip came in with his white ex. Now, I don't know if she's white or if she's Creole. I don't know, but he's the one who came in with the white X, and I'm assuming people thought Quinton would be coming in with the white X, but that's not so. So, Philip goes on a date with Kira, Aries, Kat, but actually, the Aries date was one on one, but he did another date with Kira, Kat, and was it only Kira and Kat, or was it somebody else? Okay, let's just say Kira and Kat. Um, so with Aries, he was the date was the ex was saying he had a problem with physical touch. And Philip made it clear that yes, at that time I did have an issue with physical touch, but now I don't. But with Quinton, I never saw him say, Yeah, back then I did not want to be monogamous, but now I do. So that's the difference I'm seeing there with Philip and Quinton. Philip is stating clearly that now he's changed, right? Which I think is a good sign because he was touching up all, all on Aries on that date. Kira felt like there was no path with, with Philip. Like there's no set plan with Philip. He's just like going with the motions. Like... And they spoke about him being unemployed for some time. And, you know, I feel like that spoke to Kira that he doesn't really have a lot of plans as far as his financial future, his anything. And that doesn't sit well with Kira. And I feel like she had a very, like, um, logical view of what was going on with Philip. And I feel like it was a bit of a red flag with him as well. Aries didn't see anything much as a red flag with Philip. 
Kira also prefers to date men with no children. Philip has kids. So they don't align on anything. Um, Katerina, on the other hand, he mentioned on the, in the men's lounge that they do have a connection. But the thing with Katerina is um, it's going to be hard to beat Aries. So Aries is Philip's number one connection. And Katerina came in too late to kind of compete with his connection with Aries. So let's move on to Chris. I forgot about Chris. So there was a date with Chris, Jessica, and Aries. The ex spoke about being his forever girlfriend, him not, not wanting to take it to the next step with her, which is a bit of a red flag in terms of the fact that perhaps he is not the monogamous type in terms of i wouldn't say he's not the monogamous type what i mean is he's not the type to marry he's the type to string a woman along which is not good he wants to string a woman along and what i've gotten from his date was he wants wife benefits from a girlfriend I don't see Jessica tolerating that mess at all. And furthermore, another red flag was him wanting the women to be in a state of servitude towards him, but they not but the women themselves were not getting or are not getting support from him. So in my view of that whole thing, is that there's kind of like a lopsided relationship with Chris and his partners. He wants them to serve him. He wants them to cater to him. He wants them to be soft with him. But he doesn't reciprocate the energy that they need for them to be that way to him. Or for it to be a leveled type of relationship. So that's a, 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 a completely different, or should I say that's a completely hard no for Jessica for one. I know Jessica is not going to tolerate the mess. Aries is saying that he him apologizing for things that existed he did wrong is him being grown and him being a leader and him being you know him owning up to his stuff which for aries is a good thing him seeing she seeing him as a leader does not really translate to jessica jessica doesn't see it that way So this did led me to believe that him and Jessica are no more. It's just not going to work. Him and Aries might work, but I feel like Aries has a stronger connection with Philip. The men meet at the lounge. And Sierra, they feel like Sierra is surface level. They feel like Lee is too busy. They feel like Kyra is out of touch. Basically, Sierra and Kyra were the ones that would be bottom two to my shock because i feel like since they sent two men home they would send two women home but they only sent one woman home which was kyra or kira not surprising to anybody she didn't connect with anybody i don't think she was shocked that she was sent home she thought that it was mutual and um i want to see what happens with sierra I want to see how she navigates the thing with Maury and Herbert. And um, let me know what you guys thought about this particular episode. I didn't want to stay on so long, but here we are. Let me know what you thought. Have you gotten any red flags from any men? Chris, I've gotten red flags from Chris based on what his ex has said. I've gotten red flags from Philip a bit in terms of him his employment status, his financial status. Um, I'm getting red flags from Herbert because I don't think he's truly into Janelle or any of the other women. And um, Maury, all of the men were giving me red flags this episode for various reasons. 
Um, and so, let me know what you guys think about these men. Do you really feel like there are any good men on this show? Do you like Philip's connection with Aries? Do you feel like there's things that Aries saw that she ignored? And maybe that's why Aries have had issues with a lasting marriage. Do you feel like she ignores red flags until marriage? Um, let me know in the comment section. Like, subscribe, and see you guys next time for another review with me. Bye-bye.